All right, thanks for watching. And today I will present a really cool application of linear algebra. I know, linear algebra is so neat. Namely, today I will use linear algebra to calculate explicitly the nth term of the Fibonacci sequence. And you may ask, what is the Fibonacci sequence? Well, let's consider the following fun game. Let's start with one comma one, and then successively, let's add the previous two terms. By this I mean, to get the next term, let's do one plus one. And you get two, I hope. And then the next term becomes one plus two, which is three. The next term, two plus three, which is five. The next term, three plus five, which is eight. And you get 13, etc., etc. Namely, consider a sequence of the following form. Again, the next term, un plus one, equals to the current term plus the previous term. In other words, the next term is the sum of the two previous terms. And we said that initially it's one, so u0 equals to one, and u1 equals to one. And believe it or not, this was originally used by Fibonacci to count bunnies. Yes, in fact, you know, so this represents the number of bunny growth, you know, in terms of the year or the month. And you'll see that, in fact, this number grows really, really big. So you know, bunnies are very cute, but they multiply pretty quickly. So just beware. Okay, and as I said, you know, using diagonalization, in fact, we will find an explicit formula for UN. So go find an explicit formula for UN. And again, the answer may so surprise you. It will involve a very, very famous number that is not pi and not e. Woo. Okay. And here's the trick. It seems like a very stupid trick, but it's actually very efficient. Let's take this equation and add another equation to it. So trick, add the equation. Again, don't laugh, but let's add the following one, namely un equals to un. I know, I'm so clever, right? <laughs> But there is a reason I'm doing this, is because linear algebra deals with systems of equations. And here we just have one equation. Well, to make it a system, let's just add the other trivial equation. So you get the following, un plus two, un plus one equals to un plus un minus one and un equals to un. And once we have that, we can write this in matrix form. We in fact get that the vector un plus 1 un equals to, again, 1, 1, uh, 1, 0, un, un minus 1. And this is kind of interesting, because the left vector is the same as the right vector, except you add a plus one on both sides. So in other words, you may think, if you'd like, this being the future term, this being what, like a transition matrix, A, and this being the present term. Because it, it represents, haha, you know, presents, uh, the, the present and the past, and this is like the future and the present. So one, you know, time shift ahead. So in other words, what this says is, in order to go from the present to the future, just multiply our matrix A. I mean, it would be nice if life were as easy, you know, just go to the future via a matrix, but not always true. Okay, and let's play.
play around with this a little bit. So, again, what we have is the following. Okay, so for example, how would we calculate u2, comma, u1? Ah, u2, okay. You just, again, this is like the future. So, all you do is you take your present term, u1, u0, and you multiply by the matrix A. How would you calculate u3 times u2? Well, that's the same as going one step in the past, so it's a link to the past, a times u2, u1. But remember, u2, u1 is just a times that. So it becomes a times a times u1, u0, which is the same as a squared u1, u0. And let's continue a little bit more, just to make this a bit clearer. u4, u3, that becomes a times u3, u2. But u3, u2 is just a squared times that. So it becomes a times a squared u1, u0, which becomes a cubed times u1, u0. A cubed, or if you like cars, it's AAA. All right. And the nice thing is, with those formulas, we can really relate any term, you know, any term the form un, un minus 1, in terms of the initial term. Because u2, u1 is a to the first power of u1, u0. u3, u2 is a to the second power of u1, u0, and u4, u3 is a to the third power of u1, u0, and in fact, generalizing this, we get that un plus 1 un is a to the n times u1, u0, which becomes, again, u1 and u0, they're just 1, so a to the n, 1, 1. Which is great, because again, we took a certain problem and wrote this in terms of linear algebra. And now, because un plus 1 un is a to the nth power of that vector, it would be nice to figure out what a to the nth power is. And in general, if you want to figure out powers of matrices, it's very useful to diagonalize. So let's diagonalize. Okay. So I forgot all this was step one, and now step two. Okay. Let's diagonalize. A. And again, remember what A is. It's 1, 1, 0. 1, 1, 1, 0, and if you do the diagonalization process and everything, you actually find that A equals to P, D, P inverse, where D equals to A, 0, 0, B, and P equals to A, B, 1, 1, and the question is, what are A and B? So let me tell you. In fact, A is nothing other what's called the golden ratio. 1 plus square root of 5 over 2. Some people call it phi, but this is fine, okay? And B is sort of like the complex conjugate. Oh, not really, but 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. And this golden ratio is very important because it's, it appears over and over again in nature, and before in the Renaissance, some people use that to show that you have a beautiful face if the height of your face divided by the length equals to the golden ratio. You know, but anyway, it's a very beautiful number. Okay, and why is that important? Well, we found that A equals to PDP inverse, and in fact, this relation allows us to calculate any power of A, even imaginary powers or whatever, 
because a squared, that's aa, that's pdp inverse, pdp inverse, okay? But look, the p inverse and the p cancel out, and you have pd squared p inverse, and let's just continue, a cubed, that's again aa, that's pdp inverse, pdp inverse, pdp inverse, okay. and you have another cancellation, and in the end you're left with p dq, p inverse. That's great. a squared is p d squared p inverse, a cubed is p d q, p inverse, etc, etc. So you may guess that a to the n is p d to the n p inverse, which in this case becomes a b 1 1, d is a, so a comma 0, a 0 0 b, so the nth power of a diagonal matrix is easy to calculate, you just take the powers of the diagonal entries, and then a b 1 1 inverse, now, if you calculate that inverse, you multiply everything out, you get a horrendous thing, but it turns out it becomes much simplified. In the end, if you actually calculate this, you become 1 over square root of 5 times a to the n plus 1 minus b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 b plus b to the n plus 1a, and a to the n minus b to the n minus a to the n b plus b to the n a. So maybe not that ugly, you know, there's this nice similarity here between the first row and the second row, and you'll see it's not kind of, uh, it's not very surprising. Okay, so all this junk let's call it star. Because what do we have? Well, a to the n equals to that, but in the end we want to figure out, you know, un plus 1 un, which means you have to take this junk and multiply it by u1 u0. So maybe step 3, recall that un plus 1 un, that's a to the n times 1, 1, which becomes star times 1, 1, where star was this really, not big, but ugly matrix that we had. But it turns out, if you do star times this, you get a simplification. So in the end, you have 1 over square root of 5 of a to the n plus 1 minus b to the n plus 1 minus a to the n plus 1 b plus b to the n plus 1 a. And here we have 1 over square root of 5, a to the n minus b to the n minus a to the n b plus b to the n a. And before we continue, I want to remark that, in fact, this row is the same as this row, but with a plus 1 which is consistent because the first row represents un plus 1, the second row represents un. So it's sort of how oh, math is pretty in this sense, you know. In fact, we get something that's consistent. And therefore, for example, because we want to find un, let's focus on the second row. This says, in fact, that un equals to that. So un is 1 over square root of 5, a to the n minus b to the n minus a to the n b plus b to the n a. And now, instead of having an expansion party, let's have a factorization party. So let's take a to the n, which is a common factor here, and factor it out. So 1 over square root of 5, a to the n. 1 minus b, and here, let's factor out b to the n here, b to the n times a minus 1. Okay, okay 
this was still not such a bad formula, but it turns out we can simplify this a little bit. Because what is B? Remember, B is 1 minus square root of 5 over 2. So 1 half minus square root of 5 over 2. So B is 1. 1 minus b is 1 minus that, but this becomes 1 minus 1 half plus square root of 5 over 2, which becomes 1 half plus square root of 5 over 2, which is precisely a. So in fact, 1 minus b is a. And a minus 1, you can calculate this, and it becomes minus b. So in fact, the formula that looks very ugly is in fact not that ugly at all because if you calculate that, you get that un is 1 over square root of 5 a to the n plus 1 minus b to the n plus 1. So just to conclude, we have that un equals to 1 over square root of 5 a to the n plus 1 minus b to the n plus 1, which becomes, using the definitions of a and b, 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the n plus 1, which becomes our un. So, You might say, oh my god, I do not believe this. How can something as simple as just adding the two previous terms turn out to be this monster? In fact, let me convince you that this is correct by just doing a couple, by calculating if you want the first two terms. So what is u0? It becomes 1 over square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power, minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 to the first power, which becomes 1 over square root of 5 times, if you want, 1 half plus square root of 5 over 2 minus 1 half plus square root of 5 over 2. This cancels out, and you're left with 1 over square root of 5 times this plus this becomes square root of 5. So in fact, you get 1. So u0 equals to 1. And then, well, let's calculate u1. That's 1 over square root of 5 times 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 squared minus 1 minus square root of 5 over 2 squared. And let's have another expansion party. So. If you expand that, expand that out, you get 1 quarter plus square root of 5 over 2. Okay. 1 half times square root of 5 over 2 times 2. Okay. And then plus 5 quarters minus 1 quarter plus square root of 5 over 2 minus 5 quarters. So this it cancels out, this cancels out. And just like before, you indeed get 1 over square root of 5 times square root of 5, which is 1. So u0 is 1, u1 is 1, and then if you continue, in fact, at every point, you get that the square roots magically cancel out, and you get that u2, which is 2, u3, which is um, 5, and then 8, 13, etc., etc., and this is a nice thing because if you accept that this represents a Fibonacci sequence, then in fact, you see that at every step, the square roots will cancel out. Namely, we predict already that the square roots cancel out, and in fact, they do. So this is very beautiful, or in math, we say this is the golden ratio. Wow. All right, and if you like that and would like more math fun videos, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.